questions. All right. Okay. Um, so it is Michelle and I, and I love it. I um, I know everyone's busy. Um, listen, I was just telling Michelle I planned and prepared over 30 meals today for my family for the month of October. Well, I still have um, four more, like two recipes I'm doubling, so four more tonight. And um, and then I'm making like freezing breakfast smoothies and I have to do those too. Um, and I've taken all my kids to and from school and to gymnastics and back and fed them actual dinner. And I'm still on a call tonight and so is Michelle. So good job investing in your business. It's obviously, I mean, in my opinion, it's by far the best thing you could do for your business is to just show up and to continue to learn and grow um, with your Stella Dot business. So tonight we're talking about booking and um, I wanted to kind of stick to, I really love doing this like top 10 uh, and I did my top 10 um, uh, trunk show tips for, um, I've done it for our team before and I did it for another group of star stylists last night and I just thought it was really great. So tonight I was like, okay, I'm going to do top 10 in uh, booking and Jenny Eisminger, a star on our team who is an incredible booker, actually helped me. We kind of brainstormed together about um, booking and, and kind of the best ways. So, oh, and shoot, I was going to grab my, um, hold on, let me grab my planner. I need that. Okay, I need it because I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, how I do my booking, how I take, um, kind of track it. So I want to do the top 10 of booking. So if you have pen and paper, you can jot this down, but we're going to break it down into two different sections. And what I am finding is the most important thing in your jumpstart girls all the time spend tons of time working on their display. They are wearing the jewelry and they might be thinking about it a whole lot, but if you're not booking during your jumpstart, you are wasting all of this free jewelry that Stella Dot wants to give you. And I know that jumpstart can get really, really crazy and you're like, I don't know what I can earn and how I can earn it. But the truth is, is the more you sell, the more you earn in commission and the more you earn in free product during your jumpstart. Basically the best way to understand it. And I showed you guys last week how to track your jumpstart and how to see what your rewards are. So Booking. Obviously, um, girls struggle with this routinely throughout the business. And so we broke it down into two, and I always tell people, if you're not booking trunk shows, there's two reasons. It's either what you're saying, in other words, how you're saying, how you're trying to book, and how often you're asking. Those are the only two reasons you're not booking trunk shows. You're either not saying the right thing, or you're not asking often enough. You're not talking to enough people. So we're going to break it down into those two groups, what you're saying. And I'm going to give you my top five tips about what you're saying. And then how often you're asking and my top five tips in reaching out. Okay. So let's start what you're saying and how you're saying it. Um, many, many times I always say you don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water. We're not want, we don't want to reinvent the wheel and anything that I have said, I have learned from other amazing leaders but a lot of times you just need to make some very small tweaks. I remember I had a really great conversation with Brooke Abshire. He's on our team a couple of months ago and she was having a really hard time booking. And so we just honestly got on the phone and role played and she texted me and she said, I'm having a hard time booking. Can you help me out? And so she role played and I immediately noticed a couple of things that she was doing when she was trying to book with me. And I thought if you could just change a couple of things that you're saying it might actually yield really big results. And sure enough, she just changed a couple of different couple of things, which we're going to talk about. And she started to book. So here's the first thing. Jenny and I talked about this today. The first thing you need to do is be active on social media. And I'm not talking about you need to be on social media all the time, but Jenny made a really great point and I, she's so wise and I hope she's going to do a training on social media, but she said, think of Facebook as your neighborhood. Do your neighbors know you? And so she, what she does and what I do as well is take six seconds to comment on somebody. Somebody got married, someone had a baby, take six seconds, six seconds 
to write congratulations. Um, be active. I, that didn't necessarily mean that you're posting every five minutes throughout the day, but hop on, interact with people so that when you do eventually reach out to them to host a trunk show, it's not completely random that you're talking to them. I have a specific girl that I really want to host with, but her dad was just sick and I noticed that on Facebook. And so we have been texting back and forth about her dad. No, I mean, and I genuinely want to know about her dad. I'm for sure not saying that you need to be disingenuous when you're reaching out to people. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I can't just go up to her and talk to her in six months. I can't go up to her and ask her to book a trunk show. I mean, you have to kind of earn the right. And Kelly Winslow says that you have to earn the right to book a trunk show. So are you active in your neighborhood in whatever social media that is? Instagram. I find Instagram takes me a lot longer than Facebook for some reason. But um, so think about that. Never underestimate. Number two. Never underestimate the power of a phone call, but when you're making phone calls, get to the point. I find out so many times when I, and the same thing happened when I was talking to Brooke, that she felt like she needed to do, kind of do this long introduction and find out how she's doing and, and have this big conversation about what she's doing today and how her children are and what's going on with her job. And that's not what we want to do. If this is a booking call. Then you need to make the phone call, and get to the point. Number three. Pay attention to who comments on any of your posts on social media. That's really going to help you build your who do you know list. So the girl that's always commenting and she asks, there's a sale item and she asks to know how much the, the necklace is that's on sale. Your response to her could be, Hey, I would love to tell you about the necklace. It's actually $49. I think it looks so, so cute on you, but you actually hit like immediately on all of my Facebook trunk shows. I mean, of all of my Facebook posts, what do you think about getting together and doing a style session with, for you and some of your friends? We'll get you that necklace and lots of others for free. I know you already like the product, so it's a win-win. So knowing and paying attention to who's posting, that also goes back to, are you posting on social media? I try to be really conscious, uh, conscious of not always posting about Stella and Dot, but and also posting about me wearing the product, not always someone else. I do repost some things and I take some pictures or whatnot, but I try to really do how the things that I love. And Jenny and I were talking today and she said, oh my gosh, I just bought this, these pair of boots, these cute, you know, winter boots on, um, online. And I found myself clicking and buying them. And I thought, I have no idea why I'm buying this other than the girl on Facebook just somebody they were super cute. And I felt like she was my friend. Like we were, she was talking on the post and she was literally recommending a product. And so find the pieces of Stella and Dot that you love, post about them, share how you're styling them. I've worn, um, I know I used to love the vanilla necklace when we had it, which was all different colors. And for like, I don't know, three or four weeks, I saved a picture in a folder on my phone. Every time I wore it with a different outfit, I just snapped a picture kind of in the same angle. And then I, I mean, about three weeks later, I put a collage together, posted it on Facebook. Oh, not only did I sell three, but I booked two trunk shows from that. So just talking about the versatility, but people like to see you because then it doesn't feel so salesy. So next time you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through Instagram, think about what attracts your attention and what about that post attracts your attention and be very smart and intentional with your social media. Don't just do what we call post and pray. Don't just post on social media and pray that someone's going to notice it, but instead be very intentional about it. All right. Number four, that kind of leads to number four, which is be authentic. Whenever you're booking, um, you have to be real with a person. So you're not trying, I listen to booking calls all the time and I'll take somebody's words to say, I'll take a little bit of what Kelly Winslow says, a little bit of what Sarah Chauvin says. I've taken several things for what Jenny says tonight. You have to find your own voice. You have to talk about it in a way that feels comfortable to you. I talk about booking so often that it's easy for me. It just kind of rolls off my tongue. So you have to familiarize yourself with that and let it kind of become your way. And my fifth thing is to be confident. I've spoken with several, and I think you have to really listen to yourself. And this is where role playing comes in to play. So if you're married, if you have a boyfriend, if you have a best friend, ask someone to role play with you and pretend like they're booking a trunk show. Because the last time I did this with one of our new stylists, I will tell you, this is what she said. I said, okay, I'm going to be, you know, a good customer. And um, I'm going to use Susie. So Susie's a stylist, Susie's stylist. So Susie's stylist says, you know, hi, Callie. It's, you know, Susie from Stella and Dot. How are you? And I say, oh, I'm fine. And she says, I'm calling to make sure you love your purchase. Oh, yes, I love my necklace. Well, listen, 
I just think about it. I don't know if you'd want to or not, but I was thinking maybe, you know, you mentioned it at the show. I mean, I, I mean, I have a couple of days open. If you, if you want to, we can maybe do a trunk show. Okay. So it, A, that doesn't come across very confident. B, the customer's thinking, is she asking me a question or is this like a suggestion? Like, does she want to do a trunk show? Cause she doesn't sound super excited about it. I mean, I, I don't even know what she's talking about. And she sounds a little hesitant. So I said, what if you called and you said, Hey, I was thinking about you. Give her a compliment. You're always so cute. We had so much fun at the, at, at Miranda's trunk show that you came to. So I was thinking I've got two dates left. You need to be my next hostess because you'd be great at it. Your friends all love you. You love Stella and Dot. Let's get you some for free. And so it's way more of a, it would be so fun rather than, Oh, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? Maybe could you do me a favor? And I think you have to remember that you're offering them an awesome opportunity to get a ton of free stuff. I will tell you, I've hosted many, many direct sales uh, parties and none of them you get what you get with Stella and Dot. So you should never feel bad or feel like someone's doing you a favor to host a trunk show. So you, there are plenty of fish in the sea. And so I throw out the opportunity and um, I kind of very confidently, I confidently offer the opportunity because I actually think that they're really fun. And I've never had ever had a host to say that she regretted it ever. So I have no reason to think that this person I'm calling would hate it either. So those are my top five. Active on social media. Never underestimate the power of a phone call. Pay attention to who comments on your posts. Be authentic and be confident. Okay, so that's what you're saying. Now let's talk about how often you're asking. Jessica Heron often says that the difference between a hobbyist and a um, career Stella Dot stylist is someone that is tenacious. And I love that word because it it, it sounds, um, what, what is it? It sounds fierce, but not bitchy. And so that is kind of how I think of the word tenacious. I, I, I think that you have to set a goal and you have to say, okay, I want to book, I want to have five trunk shows in, you know, October, which is completely doable. Then guess what? You don't stop until you have five trunk shows in October. That means that whatever you have to do to do it, that means you're posting your goal on your um, mirror. That means you are sharing it with your sponsor. That means you are reaching out to a friend and saying, hey, let's do this together. You've got some sort of accountability. But, it, but even if all those things are taken away, you have a why. And you have, We talked about that last week. We talked about figuring out what it is that, that is continually continuing to motivate you in your selling out business. Uh -huh. So keeping that in the forefront of your mind and saying, I said, I wanted to do five trunk shows. I want to find a way to do five trunk shows. That means that I am going to book Facebook trunk shows. or I'm going to do a pop-up shop at a salon, or I'm going to be do in-home trunk shows, whichever it is. I'm not going to quit calling. I'm not going to quit asking until I've met that goal. I also think you have to be reasonable in your goal and say you want to book five trunk shows in October. Hey, guess what? You need to be reaching out and prospecting now so that you're not waiting to the beginning of October to be booking those. So number one, be tenacious. Number two, build your who do you know list and can be continually adding to it. So this is what I was going to show you guys. Um, I have a who do you know list. I have one that I think I showed it to you guys before. My one that I, when I very, very, very first started, it's so old and ratted and tattered but I keep all of my old who do you know list because I go back and look at them this one was from I don't have a date of oh, August last August okay this is the 2242 this is everyone that I reached out to last August okay this one I started a couple of weeks ago with the 100 nose challenge Okay. And it's all color coded. This one I have posted on the file section of our team page. You actually put a name here. Um, and there's a smiley face. I color in the smiley face whenever I call them in blue. I write whether I email texted or, um, left a voicemail. And then once I get a no, I color red. Once I get a green, I color, or I color this either, um, green or red. So you'll see that this person right here, book the trunk show. 
but all of these people did not. Okay. So this was a real, I really liked this um, last month. This is the way I did it. I started another one this month. So this is another way. Okay. Um, in our Stella and Dot Stylus Lounge, you guys have the 2242 tracker and they have this printed out for you. In October, it'll be something really cute. And you actually, I put two people's name on every single day. I'm reaching out to those two people. I write their phone numbers down so I can take the paper with me, call them while I'm in the car. So on Monday, you call two people. On Tuesday, you call two new people. You follow up with the people from Monday if they haven't gotten back to you. On Wednesday, you call two new people. You follow up with the people on on from Tuesday. Does that make sense? So you're going two phone calls every day, two new phone calls, but possibly two follow-up phone calls if they don't respond to you. So build your who do you know list. I carry a list around with me all the time because I might be in Starbucks and see a friend that I haven't seen since Carson played T-ball two years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I should reach out to her. I'll add her on my contact list because I'll reach out to her on Facebook. So, and with the algorithm of Facebook now, you don't always see everybody's updates. So I constantly have a who do you know list. It's always in the back of my mind. So number one, be tenacious. Number two, build your who do you know list, but always be adding to it. Number three, use a system. This is what I was just kind of referring to. I am a pen and paper girl. It's just my MO. It's the way I like to do things. I love my Erin Condren planner. I can show it to you guys. Um, it is completely filled and booked. I like to use stickers. I get the colored pencils. I was a former teacher, so school supplies are like my jam. Um, they are my love language. So I have that. Whatever your system is, I have a way that um, I actually don't do many of my customer care or my booking phone calls till Thursdays and Fridays. I save those for Thursdays and Fridays. So but you need to find a system. And if you're struggling with finding the system, let me know. I'll share with you mine. I actually just texted it to Liz, I think, the other day and told her what my system was and what my, I think it was Liz, it was someone, Ashley, sorry, that's who I was sending it to. Um, in Tennessee, I was telling her what I do every day. And when I was just a stylist, what I worked on for 30 minutes every single day. I worked my business 30 minutes every day for five days. That's what I did when I first started as a stylist. Um, and I, so I have a system and it, it keeps me accountable. It keeps me on track. Have a system for booking. And if you need the 2242 tracker, I can post that to the team page. All right, number four, Jessica Heron just said this on a uh, Facebook chat, I don't know, last month. And she said that um, follow up is, following up is professionalism. It is not annoying. And I love, love, love this because I actually just did a trunk show yesterday and there was a lady there that sold cabbie. And we were talking about that I shopped cabbie. You guys know what cabbie is? You know what cabbie is? Okay. So I've shopped cabbie several times. And can I tell you that as many, I mean, I probably have, I don't know, 15, 16 items that I've shopped over a course of a couple of years. Never, when I say never once, I mean never once has a cabbie rep ever called me and followed up. And if they did, I wouldn't be offended at all. I would never be offended. If they asked me to host a trunk show, I might go, I don't know. I mean, maybe call me back. I mean, the beginning of October is crazy for me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Maybe no one's ever even asked me. Do you know that no one has ever, I have three daughters. No one's ever asked me to host a Matilda Jane trunk show ever. Never, which is crazy because I shop it all the time, but no one follows up with me and, and then and no one asks, which I think is crazy. In fact, uh, when I was at a trunk show this past Saturday, really sweet ladies, um, very wealthy realtor came up to me and she's obviously in the customer service industry. And she said, I just, I want to tell you something. And she looked at me and she's probably in her late seventies. And she said, if you want to be successful with Stella and Dot, you need to follow up. She said, I've shopped at five Stella Dot trunk shows and every trunk show I've spent over $200. No one's ever called me, ever. And so I just started thinking to myself, when I get worried about, oh my gosh, are they going to be annoyed that I'm calling or I'm texting? 
at the very worst, I'm offering great customer service because the first thing, especially with past customers, what I'm doing is I'm calling to make sure they got their piece and they love it. Um, but if they're a new person and they've ever shopped before with Stella and Dot, then my first thing is going to be like, I think you're so cute and you're so fun. And you're so stylish. I see you with your friends all the time. You guys get together for wine night and Vaxler all the time anyways. Let's do a Stella and Dot trunk show. I've never been offended by somebody asking me. So I think sometimes we're, we're in our own head. I ever heard um, Jessica Heron say before, hey, guess what? The bubble in her head is all about her, and the bubble in your head is all about you. So no one's really thinking about you as much as you think they're thinking about you. They're not. They're going to hang up the phone and go, that was really nice of her to think about me. I actually feel kind of nice that she wanted to do a talk show with me. So use the system, follow up. And number five, and I love, love, love this one. It's probably my favorite because I think that it hits a hot point with lots of people. The question is, is be honest with yourself how many people you're actually reaching out to. If you were, you are your own boss. But if you, and since you are your own boss, would you hire you or would you fire you based on the amount of work that you do with your selling out business every day? There are days when I'm like, I was really good today and I did awesome and I would give myself a raise. But today, also, we do work a business, and Janine and I were talking about this. We've been doing a lot of Stella and Dot lately. Today, I did nothing. I was not barely on social media other than Snapchat. I just couldn't pick up Stella and Dot today other than doing this call for you guys because, and this, is, this was going to be my one thing, was going to be investing in my team. I didn't do any booking calls today. I did not. But it's also Monday, and I don't typically do booking calls on Monday. I normally wait. You know, I do them on Sundays a lot of times on Sundays. Um, so ask yourself, are you calling the number of people that you need to be calling? And I knew Silas who um, are frustrated that they haven't booked trunk shows. I'll say, well, how many people have you reached out to? Well, 10. Okay, well, you booked one. That's about right. You need to reach out to 10 people on average to book one trunk show, which is why we say that if you're doing the 2242, you're reaching out to 10 people a day. I mean, to, I'm sorry, two people a day, which ends up being about 60 people a month. You're booking about six trunk. I mean, you're booking about six trunk shows, which is, I mean, on average, we're saying aim for four trunk shows, but six would be awesome. So if that means that you're breaking it down to just calling and prospecting two people a day, then do that. So I would love to answer any questions, um, and I want to challenge you guys to reach out to me, um, Jenny, whoever your upline is, and declare your goal for booking. Start putting your system into place and see if being a little more consistent with your bookings actually helps. So I hope that was helpful. Do you have any questions, Michelle? Um, I do have one girl that I've been reaching out to for, I guess, a week and a half now. She hasn't told me no yet. Okay. I don't think that she's ever, I don't think she's ever shopped Stone Dot. Um, but I absolutely know she would love it. Okay. Um, and she seems really excited. She's had, you know, she's, we've gone back and forth. She's had to check her husband's schedule. She's had to check her kids' schedules. I had to check my husband's schedules and we just have never come to the conclusion yet. So okay. I'm just, how do I put the nail? The deal. Okay. Do you have your dates that you're available? Yes. Okay. Have you told her those? Okay. So you've said, okay, I've got this date and I've got this date, which is best for you. Mm -hmm. And what is her response? Let me check with my husband. Yes. And she got back with me. There would be one date that would work. Um, but we've just never said, okay, let's book it. So how soon is the date? Um, I think it's October 13th. Okay, perfect. So now would be the perfect time to do that. So you message her maybe this evening um, and say, Hey girl, I'm still thinking we're going to do the 13th. It's going to be super fun, but I don't want your friends to not be able to RSVP or not be able to get the invitation out in time. So are you good with me setting the trunk show up? Let's throw the invitation out, see what the RSVPs are like. And if we need to adjust the date at a later time, we totally can. But I think we should just go ahead and get that invitation out see what the response is because I would hate for people to already go ahead and start booking Halloween or fall festival events. So I mean, cause you're looking at two weeks away. 
So that's what I would just say. I would say, okay. Um, and you might even like, I mean, I don't know your relationship is, is with her, but um, you might even, you know, make a joke about, okay, too busy mom is here. Yeah. If we don't nail it, if we don't nail it down a date, you know, it's going to get swept away. So let's nail it down because I really can't wait to do the stroke show with you. Um, are you good with, and I would even go ahead and say a time. Are you good with seven o'clock on the 13th? If so, I'm going to shoot you an email tomorrow. Let's get it out before your friend's calendars get booked. And I would just be really confident, like mm -hmm. assume that you guys are already going to do it. Cause she's pretty much said yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I just think sometimes they're waiting for us to be very confident and assertive, like, Hey, let's do it. I don't want that date to get taken, you know? So but that's good. She hadn't told you. No, I've told, I've I have several people before that I've said, Hey, until you look me in the face and say, hell no, I'm not hosting. I'm going to yeah. keep asking you because I really think you'd be so good. Yeah. So does that help? Yes, that does help. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, I hope this was helpful. Um, I feel like I just threw a bunch of tips at you, but, um, if, do you have the tracker? Yes. The 2242 tracker. Okay. Um, and do you have a system? What system do you use for reaching out and following up? Um, I'm kind of like you. I have a whole planner. I've got dates highlighted. Um, and I'm using the social circles. Paper. Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. I like that one too. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks for dialing in, Michelle. You're a total rock star. Working your business. And hello, associate stylist is coming up in your jumpstart. Hello. I mean, that's like a huge deal. So um, we're cheering you on. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye.